Hey everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be working on Clairefontaine pastel mat in dark grey as usual and I'm going to be showing you how I use pan pastels and soft pastels and pastel pencils to build up the layers in fur and give that really in-depth texture to the fur like as if you could just put your hand in it. So first off I go in with a raw umber pan pastel here and one point to really make with this is to use a minimal amount and get, really work that into the surface of the pastel mat just because if you if you use too much and you don't work into the surface enough there will be pigment just sitting on the tooth of that paper rather than being worked into the texture and we don't want that because that means it will be harder to add details on top uh, here I'm using a raw umber soft pastel by Rembrandt these are so great for getting dark tones there's no pen pastel pencil that would match this because they're, they're a soft pastel rather than a, a chalkier pencil. So I really recommend getting some of them. Uh, one tip I can say is don't be afraid to use blues in your fur. Um, using blues can give a really great cool effect, like a cool dark brown. If, you just keep, if you're limiting yourself to just shades of brown in your pastel set, you're not going to get the full range of colour that you're looking for, the vibrancy. So using blues can um, really widen your, your colour range. To get the darkest blacks you can get, I found this pencil. It's the Creta Colour Soft Charcoal Pencil. And I, I just used it under the ear there for that shadow. And it, it really is the darkest pencil I've found. Black pencil anyway. The only problem is it can get quite muddy if you go over it. So I, I like to use it as a last touch kind of thing to get that deepest colour tone. So the, pe the pastel pencils I use are predominantly um, Carbothello, Stabilo and these are really good and nice because I've got the sharpener by Stabilo and you can sharpen it to such a fine point so these are really great for those little hair strokes the main thing you want to be aiming for in your first layers are getting them dark enough uh, a lot of people say that they struggle to get the tones like the, the deep tones and then they struggle to get the highlights on top because they haven't got a deep enough colour underneath um, so yeah for your first layers, just focus on getting them dark and getting them relatively thin and really focus on the cool and the warm tones within that colour spectrum. So now we are just going in with some lighter colours and I'm focusing on the mid-tones at the moment. So different um, shade, like little shades that I can see here and there. And because my bottom layers are really dark, you can really pick up those tones that I'm putting on top there. One tip I missed out for the very beginning is if you um, take your image and put it in an image editor and just blur it for those first layers, it really stops your eye from looking at the details and helps you focus on purely the tones. So that's a good tip for all the first layers. I tend to do it on Photoshop if it's quite a um, detail heavy photograph, just so just to stop my brain from looking at the details for those first stages. So I'm now reaching into the higher end of the mid-tones as you can see i'm using some yellows and some oranges don't be afraid as well to go in with some really bright colors because you can always go over the top and mute them down afterwards using these different color ranges and not just browns is going to give you the the vibrance a lot of people say to me i don't know how to um get the vibrancy in my work and i think it is down to just not being afraid to use your whole set of colours where needed. So the beauty of pastels is that you can always go over and desaturate the colours if you need to. So yeah, in my opinion, it's probably better to be on the more vibrant side of things first off, and then you can always desaturate later. Here I'm going in with a really bright light pink by Karen Carbothello. Um, I love this colour for highlights because it's it's not too warm and it's not too cool of a colour so it's really great mid-tone and it's it's a bit more interesting than just using white. If you're just using um, whites for your highlights then I would really recommend looking into some bright, some like really pastel -y type of colours because they can really give you a nice edge to your highlights. And that way you can explore warm and cool kind of highlights rather than just white. Karen Dash has some really great highlight colours. I will link some in the description below. But they have some really great uh, lilacs and bright blues and silvers and stuff like that. That's one thing I really love Karen Dash pencils for. 
I also love their cream tones. There's one pencil that I use in this kind of fur so often. I'll also link that in the description. It's like a really nice beige grey colour. So I'm just carrying on here, getting loads of different types of browns in there. Pushing back some shadows underneath those fur strands and pulling some forward. I'm also using the Contour Paris Pastel Pencils here. I really love them as well. They're very soft. Just an absolute nightmare to sharpen. And now we're on the very top layer, which is going to be those grey hairs. And I am using some colour pencils for this, just because they have much harder leads and they're very easy to sharpen to get to a fine point. And that's what we need for these final hair details. The light blue I went on to use just because the hair, the grey hairs are very cool in colour, like almost silver. So the, the coolness of the blue is going to show that more than a white. So that's it for this section of the tutorial guys, I really hope you got something from this. Do let me know in the comments below if you did and if you're going to buy any of these new pencils. It's always very exciting. <laughs> um, I'll see you next video, please like and subscribe and have a lovely week of drawing. Oh and I forgot to say, um, I'm just carrying on drawing the eyes here as a little sneak peek for next week's tutorial and it's going to be a reflective dog eye study. So don't miss that one, it's going to be a really fun one.